always two sticks in the crafting recipe? Am I... Am I going crazy? Welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. In this series, I want to build up my village and the surrounding area to be the best that it can be, all while not dying. To accomplish this, I'm going to need a lot of resources. Today, I'll be building what I think are the six most important farms for the early game. Can we talk about how it's episode four and I still don't have a diamond sword? I mean, come on, we, we gotta work on this. We, we gotta work on it, villagers. We haven't really had a chance to use any of our diamonds yet, so I feel like a diamond sword, it'll be perfect. All right, enchanting table, please be good to us. Okay. I'm breaking three. You know what? I'll take that. Okay. I just realized we're literally on day 100 right now. Day 100! Oh my gosh! Thanks for hanging out with me for 100 days, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Don't miss the next 100. Okay, now let's officially talk about farms. The farms that we have so far are very basic. I mean, this is fine, but it's very slow. We also are currently still getting our food over here from the cows. We've got four sheep, which, you know, it, it does okay, but I feel like we could do a lot more with this. So I've thought about it, and here are the main two things that I need. Iron and emeralds for infinite trading with the villagers. The stick trading with the Fletcher has been going well, but there's actually a bunch of farmers over here. Yep. Yeah. Hello, folks. And, well, we haven't really done very much with any of these guys yet, including the librarian, actually. Oh. Oh, no. No, thank you. Yeah, I think we could definitely help the villagers out with this. So, here's plan for today. I've got five main farms that I think we could work on. First of all, an iron farm, very important. Sugar cane is a classic and we need the paper. Melon and pumpkin, crops and wool. And this looks a little weird. Surely I can think of a sixth. Um, nobody mind that sign, okay? Now that we've got a plan, it's time to gather up some materials. And I think, yeah, here we go. Some cobbled deep slate. We're gonna start with probably the most complicated today, the iron farm. I'm gonna build this farm for us just over here. Hopefully it'll be a nice distance from the village, but close enough that it's loaded in while we're farming our dungeons. For this iron farm, I'm gonna be following the tutorial from Waddles. I'll link it down below. Okay, that's as far as I can take that farm until night falls. So now I guess we have time to work on something else since, you know, it's only midday. That something else is going to be a villager breeder. I'm gonna try not to use this for the actual village population as I wanna keep the original villagers. However, we're gonna need villagers for a lot of these farms, so we need some extras, you know? Thankfully, I build these things fairly frequently so I, I can kinda remember how they go. All right, sheep, now comes the uh, much more difficult part. I gotta go get some villagers to put in that. Moving villagers from a village can be a real pain. My first thought was to move them at night and have them follow a bed, but uh, that didn't go so well. This is the worst. This is absolutely the worst. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> what are traders gonna show up right now? So I decided instead of moving a villager, I would move a zombie into the iron farm. We're multitasking here. Then I'd focus on getting a villager in the daytime using workbenches, which is also frustrating by the way, but it's possible. Honestly, once you get them out of the village, it's not too bad, but my God, those first couple steps within the village, awful. Dude, really? How did you fall in the only hole? Nearly there, go on. You wanna see that brewing scent? No, 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 no. No, come, come back here. Yeah, there you go. Now, in theory, I could just wait for sleepy time, but I can also just try to shove. Uh, no, okay. We'll, uh, we'll wait for sleepy time. In the meantime, we can turn our attention back to our iron farm now and start working on those villager platforms. Okay, the sun is setting again, now is our time. So those villagers over there should hopefully be hopping in their beds any second now. And um, no, just don't mind me, I'm just gonna do a, a little bit of torch spam because I, I don't want a repeat of last night. Now all I've gotta do is come in here and remove all of the extra blocks from around the villager breeder. Okay, perfect. Now when they wake up, they'll be in position. And that's really all we needed the night for. Okay. 
Nice. I think the iron farm is all ready for villagers. Only thing we need now is some villagers. So we gotta uh, kickstart the breeder. No problem, a little bit of bread can't solve. There you go. All right, while we wait for the villagers to fall in love, I see a little bit more iron up here. So I think I'll do some mining in the mountains in the meantime. But even though we are making an iron farm, I'm gonna need iron for hoppers for that farm to actually work. So I can't run out. And luckily in Minecraft, the higher you go in the mountains, the more iron there is. All right, I feel like 58 iron is a pretty good haul. Especially considering we might never have to mine iron again after today. <sighs> I think it might be love. Good. Wonderful, <laughs> and there's our first child. Now, here we go, villager breeder, check. In order to work on the iron farm and also the crops farm, I need the villager breeder to make a lot more villagers, so we'll have to kind of wait on that. But in making the villager breeder, we actually used a ton of wool. And well, my four sheep here are working very hard, but I think a wool farm is in order. Thankfully, wool farms are not actually too complicated, and for the most part, we already have everything that I should need, which is an observer and a dispenser. Since the sheep are already right here, I think we'll go ahead and transform this little building into our small sheep farm. Since today we're just doing starter farms, I'm only gonna set up three of these wool farms. The good news is this design is extremely expandable, so I should be able to add more later on if we need them. Perfect. What we gotta do is put a pair of shears in each of these, and every time this little guy eats a little bit of grass, it will get sheared. No, villager, villager, no, no. You don't need to be involved. You don't need to be involved. No, 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 no. Oh, gosh. Okay, that was surprisingly painless, I think. And just like that, our mini sheep farm is a success. I just have to decide what color I actually want the sheep to be. I mean, they don't have to be left white. Ooh, it's working though. Oh my gosh. Look at that. We've already collected a tiny bit of wool. Now, as for the colors, I think we'll definitely be needing a pink and then maybe a magenta or a purple along with the white. All right, we now got a pink sheep, a purple sheep, and a white sheep ready to go. And the farm is working. Look at that. We're gonna get so many free building materials from this. We'll farm. Check. Good news, my villager breeder baby has finally grown up, so we can also get this guy up in our farm. Just uh, jump into bed, yep, perfect. And the cycle repeats itself. All right, I'm just gonna wait here until we have two more villagers to work with. All of the villagers are officially in place, and that means now I get to work on the actual farm bit. And we should hopefully have iron golems spawning in here fairly soon. Okay, that should do it for the actual spawning platform. And all I have to do is work on the, uh, the killing chamber. As someone who is currently protecting a village, I'm not thrilled about this, but the iron will be useful for the village, so overall I figure it's a net positive. And with that, I believe the iron farm is complete. All I have to do is come up here and officially turn it on, AKA let the villagers get super scared by the zombie. So we just remove this and this and this. And um, not to be rude, but it does seem like they're panicking and the farm is instantly working. Awesome. Iron farm complete. We're officially halfway done. It's just the crop farms left to do. Now, looking at this list, I think the easiest one for me to do right now is going to be the sugarcane farm. I already have a bunch of sugarcane growing over here on the side of my house. I feel like we could probably keep the farm right here, but just move it around a little bit to make it automatic. We're gonna need an observer and a bunch of pistons. Pistons means we're gonna need more iron. <laughs> Luckily, although the farm has been only running for a couple of minutes, I bet it's got lots of iron. Oh yeah, 
This bar is so overpowered. <laughs> that's, that's actually incredible. Nearly three stacks of iron, no problem. I'm gonna be going with an extremely compact design this time around. And to do that, we're going to need some of the new mud block. Well, I guess it's not technically that new, but it's not very often that I do tech stuff. So, you know, it's, it's new to me. All we gotta do is set up a new water station right here and make each of these dirt mud. The mud is nice because hoppers can actually collect straight through it. Brilliant. <laughs> you could, of course, hook this up with a bunch of observers, but I think to save resources in the early game, I'll just use this one observer and it'll probably produce more than enough sugarcane for us. Once we unlock elytra and rockets, we can always expand it very easily. Miniature sugarcane farm complete. Sugarcane, check. Right, I've just brewed myself a coffee, walked the dog, and watered my plants in real life. I'm feeling refreshed and ready to go. We have two things left to do. It's the melon and pumpkin, which we we, ha we don't even have a basic farm for that. So maybe I'll start there. After all, we're going to actually need some melon and pumpkins in order to farm a lot of them. So, um... That'll help, that'll grow, that'll give us more seed. And while that's growing, I want to work on our crop fields. And I'm thinking we'll place them out here. I know it probably seems random to be building everything out here on the side of the mountains, but I want to actually decorate this to be sort of a lone castle and sort of little farming fields off in the distance of our actual village. Similarly to what we did with the Sniffer Sanctuary, I just want the whole world to feel alive, not just the village. And once again, we're gonna need a bunch more iron for this, so huh, I'm so thankful that this thing is working so well. For the crop fields off in the distance, I think some mangrove roots would make a great fence-like structure. Oh, hello? No. Let's, uh, let's just cover this whole thing up. And you know what? I also finally have 30 levels, so I think it's time to try for a feather sword again. Moment of truth. Okay. The enchanting luck is not on my side today. That's okay, that's why we're working on the auto farms. These crop farms are going to be automatically harvested by villagers. So the first thing I did was level out a couple of little pieces of terrain where I could easily have the villagers go to work. After I had a nice spot picked out, the actual farm is not that difficult to make. There's no actual redstone. You just have to set up a bunch of hoppers and a spot for two villagers. All right, come on villagers. Which one of you wants to be a farmer? It's a trick question. Both of you are gonna be farmers. Okay. That's not quite how I envisioned that going. I wanted all of these farms to attribute to the world building in some way. So of course that means we're going to have to decorate them. I don't want them to just look like automatic farms. I want them to look like actual villager huts and places where people could really work. Tell you what, if I'm gonna making all these crop fields, I definitely need infinite water. I think it's time we make a well. I love a well. Since we now have unlimited iron, I can really splurge on the well. Oh yeah, cauldron. This is definitely the smallest well I've ever built, but it does actually work, so, you know, that's pretty cute. I know it'll probably slightly affect the efficiency, but I am just gonna try to make it a kind of organic shape. More than anything, I want this farm to feel like a villager actually does own it and work here, so in order to do that, I'm trying to not make it look too industrial. Making it look organic and nice while also making sure that a villager could never escape and a zombie could never get in is a tall order. This is starting to look pretty good, but I think it needs some green in it. Yep, that's way better, I think. Now all I gotta do is actually plant the crop field. I haven't been farming that many carrots and potatoes yet, so it may take a while for me to actually be able to fill this out. That's not a bad start, though. Now all we need is our villager friend. Oh, and I almost forgot. Very importantly, we're going to need some composters and also some lights. Why? Go on, go get your job. Okay, carrot farm is a go. Now all we gotta do is start up the potato farm. Same thing, just part two. And you know me, I, I can't resist a little detailing. All right, farmer, it's time to kickstart this process, okay? 
There you go. You take the potatoes. Uh-huh. Perfect. Sorry to interrupt. I've just... I've got to add some carrots. All right. Carrot and potato farm all working and proper. Now, um, I do also need a beetroot and a wheat farm. And we can technically make those automatic. But I don't think that I need that quite yet. So, instead, I'm going to decorate this whole entire area by adding a couple of other fields all around here. These farms won't be automatic. I'll have to come get them by hand. But I don't really mind that as carrots and potatoes are going to be our main ones for trading for emeralds anyways. One of the best things about these farms is how expandable they are. So I don't really have to worry about doing everything right away. Even though it's raining, I have to admit, I like the way that this all looks so far. I couldn't wait any longer. I had to see what this area looked like with shaders on. It's not even all grown up yet or all uh, covered up, but I think it already looks so good. For being automatic farms, I'm pretty proud of the amount of atmosphere we've been able to get here. The only thing ruining it now is, uh, well, that and also that. So what do you say we cover it all up and turn off the shaders? First things first, we're gonna need a bunch more materials for this. Thankfully, these sort of villager breeders make for pretty easy cover-ups. We just gotta make a big foundation and we'll do like a tower shape. Everybody likes a tower shape, right? I think if we're gonna be doing all of this building, we should probably finally invest in some scaffolding. Oh yeah, that is much better. Okay, little miniature villager breeder tower is complete. And of course, if I wanna access it, all I have to do is come in here and I can grab the extra villagers. I I'm so sorry, guys. So now it's really just to connect all of that to our iron farm. This may be weird to do, but the reason that I'm building all of this up is because I want when I'm building the main village to have something in the background. So all of this is very functional, but also very beautiful background sort of fantasy landscape. And so for the iron farm, I'm thinking maybe castle. Thankfully, I'm pretty sure I still have tons of stone from when I dug out the, uh, the mines. So we'll just go ahead and start smelting a bunch of this. I want at least some smooth stone for the castle after all. I'm gonna start by pretty much just covering this thing in a big old box. The tricky thing about covering up an iron farm is that you really don't want to have any blocks that are spawnable to the golems. You need them to keep spawning in the platform that you actually built for them. In order to make sure mine keeps working, I'm just gonna put a slab on top of everything I do. Do you think I'll die if I fall from here? Surely not, right? Ah, it's fine. <laughs> I really gotta get some feather falling though. We're going for a fairly rustic looking castle here, so the big box I'm building will need lots of texture added to it. To attempt to take away from the huge boxy silhouette, I'm also adding a couple of extra structures on the side and some contrasty blocks along all of the edges. I think this is the type of build that would be easy to come back and add to in the future, but for an episode 4 Iron Farm, I think this is not too shabby. I might be going a little crazy with the details in this area, but I just want it to feel so connected. I'm gonna be walking through here a lot to get the items that I need from these farms. And every time I come here, I wanna feel immersed in what I've built. So, uh, <laughs> it's a little bit detailed. And I'm really proud of how this has come out. The iron farm, a villager breeder, and crop fields. Oh, and let me show you how the crop fields are doing because I'm so proud. Look at this, we've got carrots. And we've got potatoes. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm gonna bring a bunch of these carrots back to the village now to show our villagers. Hello, everybody. Good news, we've got a farming district. I know, I know, big deal today. Now, here you go. Here's some carrots, enjoy. I should have traded those to you. One moment, I try again. Since this farmer has both of the crops to trade that we are actively farming, I'm gonna go ahead and lock that in. Thank you very much. 
and um, we'll just give the spares out to the rest of the villagers. I've put in so much work today, I'm almost out of a shovel, so we'll also buy another one of those. Oh, and maybe an axe as well. There we go. Thank you. Well, that was very extra, but the crops are indeed done. Oh, uh, sorry, am I in the way? It's a good sign, right? We just got one left right at your eye level. Melons and pumpkins. Oh, the Fletcher and the farmer. They're in love. Oh. Now, honestly, I could build a fairly large and efficient melon and pumpkin farm. However, today we're going to go with one of the simpler designs because I just don't need that many melon and pumpkin right now. So this is one of those farms where the stem of the pumpkin or melon grows here and then the observer observes when it grows from either side. I think it works. <laughs> The design of this farm is not a lossless one, it's just some simple observers and pistons stacked on top of each other in the side of my cliff here. It'll do though for the time being and we can always upgrade it down the line. However, in order to actually finish this thing, I'm thinking it would look best with some glass, so we need sand. Luckily, there's some tiny little beaches around our village that I can take from. Don't worry, I'm filling it back in. Listen, I know it's a little bit newbie, but it's a functioning pumpkin and melon farm. It's just kind of a starter farm, you know? We went all in with the iron farm and the crop farms. We have a mini pumpkin and melon farm. It, we'll call it a uh, compromise. And with that, the final farm of the day is complete. I actually did it. I'm so proud. I love the way that they all turned out and they're going to help us build up this village so much more. If you have any more ideas of things that I need, definitely leave it down in the comments. I cannot wait to hear from you and I'll see you all in the next episode. Goodbye everyone. Happy farming.